Okay, guys, um, this is my um, predictions for UFC 125. Um, this is, excuse my voice, I have a cold, so I'm getting over the flu here. So it's um, Frankie Edgar versus uh, Gray Maynard, but let's first start off with Clay Guida and versus Gomi. This should be a pretty high paced fight. Um, I, 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 I'm still, you know. I would say Gomi's probably one of the strongest competitors that Clay, as far as power wise, has has went against. Um, he has to look out for that right hand all the time from Gomi. But I'm still in a in the fact that you know I think that Tyson Griffin just got caught when he went with Gomi. You know he kind of went into his to his right, you know, circling to his right and, and just got caught. Um, but uh, with that being said. I would say that um, Clay Guida is going to press the fight. He's going to, um, you know, push him up against the cage, wrestle with him, you know, be pretty aggressive with him. I don't think he's going to sit there and try to box with him. He's going to take him to the ground and, you know, test Gomi um, as far as his conditioning goes because that's just the way that um, Clay Guida fights. It's a really high pace. And, you know, he'll do anything. He's a, you know, kind of like a madman, you know, just get you on the ground, wrestle you. And I see Clay Guida coming in there and basically winning by, by decision. Um, just just keeping Gomi from getting in his, um, in his groove of trying to catch someone with that punch. Um, with that being said, Gomi needs to really be aware of the takedowns. And really, I hope he's practicing his conditioning because his condition was pretty bad when he fought against, you know, like Kenny Florian and whatnot. He was like almost dead tired. So, but I have Clay Guida winning this fight um, by decision. Then we have Nick Diaz versus um, um, Dong Hung Kim. Um, this is a pretty interesting fight. I think that um, obviously Nick Diaz has a better boxing than, uh, than Kim. Um, Kim is going to use his wrestling slash judo, um, but the bad part about that is Nate is pretty good off of his back. He's you know his jujitsu is pretty is excellent. He has those long legs, long limbs, and we all know that those are excellent um, tools when you're doing jujitsu. So I believe that you know anywhere Kim takes him, um, Nate has. His, I wouldn't say an advantage in every realm. Obviously, the boxing jiu-jitsu part, he's pretty good at. But you can wrestle some, wrestle a guy uh, that knows a lot of jiu-jitsu and keep control of him and, and put him in positions where you can lay down some punches. So, um, But I still have that uh, Nate is pretty much is going to win this one by decision, by you know keeping his reach, keep, keeping the distance, using his reach to box, um, do takedown defense, you know, pretty much keeping um, Kim on the outskirts and boxing him to death, you know, with his, you know, his light jabs that turn into, you know, a cumulative of punches that will pretty much injure you and swell up your eye and, and all types of stuff and then go for go in for the kill on for a submission or a knockout. But um, I think that he he's not going to be able to do that to Kim this time, do this to Kim. I think he's going to win by a decision on this one by just... Um, you know, pace, keep, you know, pushing the fight. So I have Nick D, uh, Nate Diaz winning this fight by decision. And then we have Brandon Vera versus Thiago Silva. This is an interesting fight because, um, you know, Brandon Vera, you know, I don't think we've had a guy who, you know, was in his prime who has fallen so far. And Brandon Vera has to know that this is probably one of his, if he doesn't win this fight, this is his last fight in the UFC. He's going to get kicked out of the UFC and, be fighting in strike force or or some you know rinky dink um, local circuit uh, MMA bouts uh, or maybe Bellator or something like that. But he's going to be kicked out of the UFC, get fired if he loses his fight against Thiago Silva. And you know I really do think he's going to lose his fight against Thiago Silva. I think Thiago's going to you know um, you know just pretty much grind it out on him and use his his elbows and knees and move time, all this other stuff and. Even though I think Brandon Vera, you know, has reach and long legs and all that other stuff that he can use, and especially his his judo and stuff like that, that you know his throws and whatnot, he I just don't think he's going to use it. I think he's going to try to grind it out with Thiago and lose and get caught and 
And, and I just really think that's what's going to happen. I think he's just going to stay on this downward spiral and lose his match and get kicked out. He's a very inconsistent fighter. And um, I just think that he's going to lose this one, I would say, by strikes in the second round. Uh, so I have Thiago uh, Silva winning by, by, by TKO in the second round. Then we have Chris Lieben versus um, Brian Stan. This is another grind-out fight. I would say it's more grinding for Chris Lieben. Chris Lieben really wants that title shot, and or he wants to go against some high, more high-caliber. I'm not going to say title shot. He wants uh, to go against some higher-caliber fighters. And then they gave him Brian, uh, Brian Stan, which he's a you know he's he's pretty a pretty decent fighter. Um, He's a little bit more technical, I would say, than Lieben. Lieben kind of has that street fighting thing with some, with uh, you know, a, a sprinkle of technical in there. But he's a really grind out fighter, a grinded out fighter, and I think that he's going to do it in this one and win by decision by pretty much showing that he has the the ex more experience of fighting more high caliber fighters. Um, but don't but don't get me wrong because he has uh, Brian Stan has um, you know Greg Jackson behind him and. You know how they come out there with their game plans, and and you know his game plan is probably just to wrestle him to death, and 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 use his wrestling to um, try to control Lieben. But I think uh, Lieben, uh, you know, catch him with some good blows and kind of knock him off of that game plan, and his game plan to go out the window, and he'll try to grind it out with Lieben and Lieben to win that fight. So I have Lieben winning that by decision. Also, now we have the big fight, um, Frankie Edgar versus Gray Maynard. Um, now, you know, in the polls here, we have um, Frankie just can't catch a break here as far as, you know, being the favorite in a fight. You know, he wasn't a favorite for a BJ fight. He's not a favorite for this fight. And it's for a good reason because he's lo he lost against uh, Gray. Um, you know, uh, he got wrestled to death. And, and I, I just, you know, I, I think that. Frankie's going to come into this fight a little bit different. He's going to use his distance. He's going to use his speed. But I still think that, you know, once <coughs> excuse me, once Gray lays his hands on him, as far as touching him, he's going to take him down and grind him out. And nobody's better at grinding out a, a decision win like Gray Maynard. Uh, may, maybe the, his closest, the closest person to it is, is, is John Finch. The, he's going to grind... Frankie out. It's going to turn into a wrestling match. You haven't really seen that much promotion on this fight because there's really nothing to promote. It's not really an exciting fight unless you're a hardcore MMA fan or you like very technical fights because this is a technical fight. This is a a speed boxer versus you know a a, a, a primarily a just a wrestler. Gray Gray Manor has won all of his fights, most of his fights by just wrestling the person to death and winning by points. And that's what he's going to do. There's going to be no difference in what he does this time. And he's just going to go out there and do what he does best. And he's going to win by eking out, by, by getting a decision, by taking him down over and over and over, going, you know, holding dominant positions and, and, and Frank, making Frankie Egger work from the bottom and use all his energy. And while he just lays and prays, and and that's what's going to happen, and he's going to win by a decision. Uh, maybe not, maybe not the most exciting fight. Probably is not the not an exciting fight. Probably won't even get close to fight of the night or anything else. But um, that's what's going to happen unless Frankie Edgar, you know, circles and and uses really good takedown defense. But I just don't see it happening, and I see um, Maynard coming out with the win by decision and new lightweight. Um, lightweight champion so that's that um, so tell me guys what you guys think of my video you know always rate comment and subscribe if you like my video and um, tell me guys what do you guys think is going to happen who you think is going to win when these matches and do um, do you think it's going to be a boring match or an exciting match between Frankie Edgar and Gray Maynard once again thanks for watching and uh, peace